Prime Minister Manoj Bhargava, welcome to the FFE Annual Gala tonight. Thank you. And actually, FFE's mission is all about uh, promoting and helping underprivileged, talented students in achieving their goals and dreams through higher education. Now, this is the push that FFE is giving to these students. Was there um, a push that you got? Who was like your mentor in your journey? I, uh, there were a lot of mentors. Um, I mean, you, along the way, as you're a kid, in our scriptures, it says the first teacher is your mother, and second teacher is your father, and then from there on, you have a lot of people who teach you. But you're right, FFE is doing the great things, and and all you know. My task is really is all the stuff we're doing is to enable. Okay, we're actually not giving anything; we're enabling people to get better, to succeed, to better their lives. And that's our mandate, so FFE was part of that. And I mean, we give to somewhere about, I don't know, a few hundred different NGOs. So when they asked me, and I said, okay, it, it, it sounds like a good thing. And these are one of the few that has actually delivered. So they've done a good job. Excellent. And you actually, you and your organization, um, the definition of corporate responsibility, you have taken it to a whole brand new level. 99% of your revenue is going to the charity. And so tell us some of your uh, charity initiatives aside from FFE. Well, we um, came up with this idea that how do you fix India? And we found out there are a few things that if you fixed, you could actually fix half the country. And those are huge problems. Now, the government's also trying to deal with them, but governments by themselves, by definition, are not effective, right? That's just, it's not anybody's fault in the sense it's not the, you know, it's not the current whoever's in power, it's just a structure of such, and then you have so many people and so many agendas, you never get anything done. And so we looked at that and said that there are three basic needs in India. Water, electricity, and healthcare, right? So the water and electricity are really about livelihood. If you don't provide livelihood, the rest is irrelevant, right? People say education, toilets. They're, they're actually pointless unless you have a livelihood. Then you can kind of those things. So we found out that if you provide water to the rural poor, their income on average goes up by four times. We found out that half the country is living as if it's before the Industrial Revolution. So without electricity, you know, there's nothing. You know, they can't start businesses, they can't do anything because it's like not having any tools. And so we, what I decided was I'm gonna set up this invention shop, which will look at doing things that nobody else is doing. Nobody in their right mind invents for the poor. For the, it's a simple reason, they have no money. Right. Why would you invent for people who have no money? No yeah, you're not going to get anything back. So we're a little nuts on that. We <laughs> said, okay, we're going to invent for the poor. You know, something that nobody else is going to do. And we're gonna invent in a way that what we bring them is really simple. It's something that's so fundamental that it'll affect everything else they're doing. And so about 12 days ago, we released this, there's a film come out that gives you an idea of what we've done for the last several years we've been working. I don't tend to announce things until it's done, right? Otherwise. In this area, in the Bay Area, and everywhere, people tend to announce stuff all over the place and nothing is really going to get happen, right. right? So we already have those few things done. Water and electricity are ready to go. And so I expect that in India in the next few years, there's going to be a, a big movement. Um, and worldwide, actually. Water is a problem that's worldwide. Some of the other things we're doing are worldwide uh, things. And since we released the, the film, worldwide we have over 19,000 volunteers. Oh, wow. That's in just 12 days. Who are saying, finally somebody's actually going to do something instead of just talk about it. Right. Right? 
So there, are, there were enough people who said, look, we've heard enough about talk, uh, you know, awareness this, awareness that. Well, what are you doing? Is anybody doing anything? Or are we just going to be aware for the next 100 years? So a lot of people were thinking the same way. And I, had, I was in shock. I thought that in the end I was going to do it, I'm going to just do it village at a time. Yeah. No problem, I'm just going to do it myself. Yeah. But apparently there's a huge amount of interest. And uh, in India there are thousands of volunteers. You know, it, was, it was amazing. It's probably 3,000 in India. Mr. Bhagava, you know, you are very successful. You're a pioneer. You are a very successful businessman. Um, so I'm sure a lot of ideas, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs approach you for their ideas, their business plan, and so forth. So how do you filter out from what's good to what's not good? Well, I do. I do get pitched a lot. <laughs> uh, I have, you know, too many pitches. Uh, we look at it as in some simple terms. One, it can't be just about money. Okay. Second, it has to be truly useful. It can't be, well, that guy makes it and we can make it slightly cheaper. Or it can't be that we have a more efficient way of selling handbags. You know, to me, those are irrelevant. You know. So we look at stuff that has going to have some amount of meaning to someone more substantial than uh, convenience and entertainment. We're in the Bay Area. We're in the, you know, the, the mecca of yeah. convenience and entertainment businesses. Everybody here is about convenience and entertainment. Now, mind you, I like convenience. <laughs> you know, I mean, the iPhone is an awesome product. In the end, it's convenience. Uh, what we do is more uh, useful and not as cool. Right? I mean, I said that in the documentary. I said, we don't do cool stuff. We just do really useful stuff. And especially we do stuff that's going to have a substantial effect on humanity. Not just better makeup or better, you know, something which is, you know, I mean, I'm sure it's a great thing to do better these things, but it has no interest for me. I'm just an old guy trying to do a different kind of stuff. I have no interest in... in toys or cool stuff. Or just an FYI, you're very cool, by the way. I, I mean, we talk about your movie, Billionaires in Change, all the time. I know uh, our team members are very inspired when they watched it. So it is cool to make a difference in the world. You're a very cool dude. Uh, okay. <laughs> I have no idea what that's about, but okay. <laughs> no, tell us, this is my uh, first opportunity to interview uh, someone with with your caliber, a billionaire right here in Silicon Valley. How does your day look like? It's not really any different than most anybody else's. I get up in the morning. I think there's a, there's a misconception that if you're a billionaire, that must be, you must go out and your <laughs> butler brings you tea in the tea garden or something. <laughs> I get up, you know, I, I, I get ready, pour a bowl of cereal, you know? What's your favorite cereal? <laughs> I'm not going to start with that. But, you know, I, I put the milk in, I, I eat the cereal, drive to work, and then I work like hell. I, I, I work hard if I can. You know, if there's work to be done, I'm doing it. And at the end of the day, I mean, it, it's really not that different. I mean, there's somebody who said, there's only one thing you can do eight hours a day, and that's work. Mm. And what if, what if you enjoy your work? I mean, to me, it's football, basketball, cricket, all in one. Yeah. Wow. Work is great fun. <laughs> and I'm, I kind of, we've made our business so that it is fun. You know, everybody there enjoys it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have certain conditions in the company that if you don't enjoy it, go work somewhere else. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, you know, uh, Give us some, a tip for some youngsters. They're getting into the job market right now. If you, have, if you can give you know, some of your wisdom to them, what can they do? Well, look, the problem with everyone is they follow fashion, right? You do what everybody, all your peers think it's cool, and thinks, you know, this is, right now it's cool to start a business in Silicon Valley and get rich. That's the... When I was, when I was in, in the early, late 60s, early 70s, it was the entirely the opposite. It was get out, drop out, do something else, <laughs> right? So people tend to, both are, have, both are really irrelevant, you know, in the sense that uh, 
fashion isn't what and it should define your life. Right? What everybody does, what everybody says, shouldn't define life. The ideal thing is to do something that has value, right? People say, follow your dreams. I think at one game, one time I gave a speech, I said, follow your dreams, but make sure it's the right dream. <laughs> you know, if, you're, if your dream is to be a serial killer, please, <laughs> please don't do that, yeah, <laughs> right? Please. So it's, it's sort of think with your head. Although I know movies say, no, think with your heart. Uh, no, think with your head. Do that which is, you know, has strength, which has meaning. And if you do that which has meaning, your life is better. You're, most of the people that watch this are relatively rich people, right? Yeah. I mean, and most of them are going to earn a living. They'll eat, they'll live, you know, they'll be fine. Beyond that, there should be something to do that's useful. That's something that says, okay, I did something. I didn't just work on a door latch all my life or something. You know, not, not to say door latches are bad. I mean, I'm sure guys work on door latches and it's awesome. But at the end of the, your life, you want to say, did I do something of value? Or in the beginning or in the middle? You know, if every day you go to work and it's like office space, <laughs> you know, where do I, you do, yeah, do I care? Does anybody care? If that's what it's going to be, then get paid less. Do something useful. You're going to be way better off. And, and chasing money, I never chase money. You know, people ask me, well, why, when did you decide to give it away? I, I never, the problem is I never in, was interested in having a, a toys. Right? But it's one of those, if you try, don't try, it happens. Right. It's the cool factor, you said. Right. Right? It's sort of, when I was young, anyway, if you were trying to be cool, you weren't. <laughs> Right? right? It's so it's it's sort of if you do that that which is has value, you're much better off. That's so it. one final question, because um, I know you have to head inside the FFE gala. A lot of our viewers saw your uh, grand keynote speech from Tycon back in 2013, and we saw some of the YouTube comments. They were really not happy on your perspective of MBA. You any comments on that? <laughs> you know the ridiculous part is. The more I insult, yeah. the more I get invited by business schools. <laughs> yeah. It was ridiculous. I just got invited, I won't tell you which school, no. but one of the top three schools in the country to lecture to their entire business school. I mean, I insult everybody. <laughs> so it's not, I was, I was picking on MBAs because they were there. Right. Whoever's in front, I'm happy to pick on them. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Bhargav. I really appreciate it. Sure. Thank you.